Well, our first testimony is going to come from Ola Queso, who is sitting down at the table now. We welcome you. We have a statement from Senator Carl Levin, uh, who is honored to bring her uh, to this hearing this morning. And he called me because he was so excited about her testimony. He is stuck in another committee hearing, but strongly supports the DREAM Act and uh, is uh, standing behind Ola Queso's testimony. She uh, graduated from high school in Warren, Michigan, earlier this month, a 4.4 grade point average. She's enrolled in the honors program at the University of Michigan, where she will be a pre-med student. Senator Carl Levin uh, is a co-sponsor and strong supporter of the DREAM Act, as I mentioned. Earlier this year, he intervened with the Department of Homeland Security to stop Ms. Queso's deportation. Senator Levin submitted a statement for the record, and here's what it says. We need for Ola Queso to be able to stay in this country. We need her and the people like her in our communities, in our schools and universities, in our businesses. This is a matter not of Democrats and Republicans, left and right, but of right and wrong. And I encourage this subcommittee and my colleagues in the Senate to embrace Ola Queso and young Americans like who, who will make our country stronger, if only we allow them to. Ms. Queso, thank you for being here today, fresh out of your high school graduation. And we'd like to give you a chance now to make an opening statement. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Durbin and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to submit this testimony. I was five years old, but I remember like it was yesterday. Apprehensively, I teetered into the perplexing classroom. Students spoke in a language completely foreign to me. The teacher, too, spoke and pointed a certain direction. What did she want me to do? Where did she want me to go? I stood there, frozen still and silent like a statue. The children stared, and they laughed. After a week of my unremitting silence, I was directed to the principal's office. My mother was there, too, seated to the right of the translator that helps her enroll me into school. The teacher spoke, and the translator began speaking, too. She says Ola might need special attention. She barely socializes with the other kids, and she's not learning anything. She suggests that Ola be taken out of the general class and be placed into the ELL program so she can get the extra assistance she needs. I've come a long way since that day, 13 years ago. I've become proficient in the English language, and I've excelled in my studies. Since the third grade, I've been placed in advanced programs, all of which I fully utilized. I have taken every advanced placement course my high school has offered, and I've earned a 4.4 GPA doing so. I earned a 30 on my ACT, with English being my highest score. In high school, I was a varsity athlete. I ran cross country in the fall, and I played tennis in the spring. I was treasurer of student council, and I was treasurer of the National Honor Society. Furthermore, I tutor students that are still struggling to become proficient in English, and I've received numerous scholarship offers and I've been accepted to several universities. I commit countless hours to community service and charity events because I feel that big change comes through little steps. I juggle all my schoolwork, after-school activities, and community service projects while also having a job. I have completely immersed myself within the American culture, of which I so strongly desire to become a citizen. I am currently enrolled in the University of Michigan, one of the most prestigious public universities in the nation, where this fall I will be majoring in brain, behavioral, and cognitive science with a concentration in pre-med. I ultimately aspire to become a surgical oncologist, but more importantly, despite seemingly endless obstacles, I intend to work for patients that cannot afford the astronomical fees accompanying life-saving surgeries, patients that are denied the medical treatment that they deserve. My goal is not to increase my bank account. My goal is to decrease the amount of preventable deaths. How can I go to a lucrative job every day knowing that there are mothers wasting away in front of their children because they cannot afford a surgery? I cannot, and I will not. I wish to remain in this country to make a difference. I wish to remain in this country to help American citizens. On March 28th, I was spontaneously told that I would be deported in less than a week, despite the fact that my family has complied with all immigration laws for the last 13 years. I was two months short of obtaining my high school diploma. I was shocked. How could I be sent to a place that I didn't even remember, a culture that is completely foreign to me? I'm not even fluent in Albanian, so if I were to be sent back, I cannot pursue a college education. My hard work, my dreams, and my future were at risk of being eradicated. I have considered one country, and one country only, to be my home. America is my home, not Albania. My community rallied behind me. They asked for my deportation to be suspended and the Department of Homeland Security responded and granted me deferred action for one year so I can continue my studies. My family came here legally, and we followed the law every step of the way. Despite my compliance with the law, there is no way I can obtain citizenship under the current law. Despite all my hard work and contributions, 
I faced removal from the only country I've ever considered home. Despite my aspirations and good intentions for my country, I faced deportation in less than a year. I am a DREAM Act student. I was brought to this country when I was five years old. I grew up here. I am an American at heart. There are thousands of other dreamers just like me. Look around the room and you will see hundreds of them today. All we are asking for is a chance to contribute to the country that we love. Please support the DREAM Act. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify today on behalf of all the dreamers. Ola, thank you. You were speaking for thousands just like you all across America, and you were very effective. Thank you for doing that.